Hi, in this session we're going to take a quick look at IAS 7, which is cash flow statements. So, or statement of cash flow, I suppose we should really call it. But the point is the same here. We need to understand what is contained in this and what the examiner is likely to examine. Now, cash flow statements, I know people don't like them but they're just so easy. And if you stick to these very basic things, you really should be able to deal with most things in them. So um, you've got three headings in a cash flow statement. You've got cash from operations, or operating activity. You've got cash from investing activities. And you've got cash from financing activities. And what this is trying to show is what the cash flows of the entity are in a particular year. So in a particular year, what was the cash from operating activities? What was the cash from investing activities? What was the cash from financing activities? And each of these is pretty straightforward. The cash from operating activities um, turns the P&L into cash. So what do we do? We adjust for non-cash items. So you should know that whenever you do a cash flow statement, what you do at the top is you take the profit before tax and you say, right, okay, let's add back any non-cash expenses and let's take off any non-cash gains. And that, broadly speaking, will turn the P&L into cash with a bit of an adjustment for working capital, which we do after that. Then this will tell you what was the cash from operating activities. And this is one that investors will be interested in because investors want to see how much cash you are generating. So the investors will be interested in this. That's why if there's going to be any manipulation on this, and this is often something that the examiner looks at, it's probably going to be trying to bring items up from these into your cash from operations because it makes it look better. So if they're going to manipulate this, if there's going to be a problem with the accounts, it's probably going to be around that. So in terms of preparing it, it's very easy. Start with the profit before tax. Look for any non-cash items, depreciation, accruals, amortization, etc. Add back the expenses. Take off any gains that are non-cash. Then adjust for your working capital. So if your inventory is increased, well, obviously that's going to tie up cash. So reduce it. If your receivables have increased, well, that's tying up cash. You're not collecting it. So, you know, that's going to decrease your cash. Once you've done that then you need to look at your cash from investing activities but that's really easy. That's where you buy or sell assets. So we're talking about financial assets, we're talking about subsidiaries, associates, we're talking about um, property, plant and equipment. We're talking about everything there. So if you buy it well then you're going to have to have um, paid a certain price for it. So look for the price. If you sold it well, then you're going to have some proceeds. And these items are going to go into cash from investing activities. And again, these are usually given to you pretty much on the exam paper. So they'll tell you they sold something, they'll tell you they bought something. Or you might have to do a short working in order to get it. When it comes to your cash from financing activities, well, that's just things like shares, issued some shares, issued some loans, or paid them back. And again, very easy to get those. Often they'll be given to you. Maybe they'll give you a statement of changes in equity and you can pick up the figures from there. But if you just go through a cash flow statement in terms of preparation and do your adjustment to profit before tax for your non-cash items, do your working capital and then look for any buying and selling of assets and any financing activities that are actually given to you in the question, you should have almost everything you need in order to pass the paper. Then, if you go on ahead and look for other items, you have to do workings to get the other items, I know that. 
but you should have passed by the time you get to look at those ones. In terms of the relationship here, make sure that you understand that there is a relationship between these two because obviously the cash from investing activities, if you're buying assets, well, that cash is going to be generated often from financing activities. So in order to raise the capital to actually invest it, well, they're probably going to issue shares or loans. So be aware that these two have a strong relationship. And again, that's something that the examiner could look at. So look, be aware of what a cash flow statement is, understand the bits that investors are interested in and the bits that should be related, but also work through some of the questions to make sure that you could actually prepare a cash flow statement if required.